Hi, my name is Brianna Watson, and I'm a senior in the Zoo Science program. Today I will be discussing the natural history, imperilments, and conservation efforts of the black-footed ferret, scientifically known as Mustula nigrapes. Similar to domestic ferrets, the black-footed ferret has a long body with short legs, a long neck, and a small triangular head with rounded ears on the sides. They're covered with yellow-white buff fur and black markings on their legs and the tip of their tail. The black-footed ferret also has a distinct black mask around its eyes and long claws. Black-footed ferrets typically grow to a length of one and a half to two feet long from their snout to the tip of their tail and weigh anywhere between one and a half to three pounds. Males typically grow larger than females. The IUCN Red List ranks the black-footed ferret as endangered with only around 200 adult, mature adults left in the wild. Black-footed ferrets are part of the family Mustelidae, the family that makes up the largest portion of the order Carnivora. The Mustelid family includes organisms such as weasels, badgers, otters, minks, and ferrets. The genus Mustela are characterized by their short legs and long bodies. Here is an example of a phylogenetic tree highlighting the taxonomic family Mustelidae. The different genuses are highlighted in different colors. In the green, we can see the subfamily Mustelinae, which encompasses weasels, ferrets, and minks. The orange arrow is indicating where black-footed ferrets are found within this phylogenetic tree. As we can see, the black-footed ferret is closely related to weasels, badgers, and minks, but are closest re related to the steppe polecat and the European polecat. Black-footed ferrets are the only species of ferret native to North America. Historically, the entire global distribution of black-footed ferrets was found in West Central North America, with a majority of the habitat found spanning from southern parts of Canada, throughout the United States, and reaching into northern Mexico. This distribution strongly correlates with the historic range of three North American native prairie dog species, which make up between 66 and 75% of a black-footed ferret's diet. The IUCN Red List reported in 2015 that close to 20 populations of black-footed ferrets are found in the wild, of which only four are considered self-sustaining and the rest are classified as non-self-sustaining, considered experimental populations, or populations held within zoos. This distribution map shows the current and historical distribution of the black-footed ferret. The orange area shows the historical distribution of now extinct populations of the black-footed ferret, and the red spots show the locations of reintroduced populations. The purple square on the map marks the last known wild colony. Black-footed ferrets were thought to have gone extinct in the late 1950s. It wasn't until 1964 that a business of black-footed ferrets was discovered in Wyoming. Individuals in this population were taken into professional care in an attempt to save the species. However, the last of those individuals died in 1974 marking what was thought to be the true extinction of the black-footed ferret. On September 26, 1981, a rancher in Wyoming discovered that his dog had found a black-footed ferret and later a whole colony was discovered in Pitchfork Ranch in Matitsi. In 1985, some individuals from this population were once again taken into professional care to preserve the species with more success than the first time. All currently known captive and wild populations of black-footed ferrets are descendants of the Matitsi colony. The black-footed ferret inhabits shrublands, grasslands, steppes, and short and middle grass prairies. It has been found that these areas are ideal for black-footed ferrets not because of vegetative resources, but rather the presence of prairie dogs in these areas. Black-footed ferrets are obligate associates of prairie dogs. 
Along with diet, the black-footed ferret relies on prairie dogs for housing, as they frequently invade and reside in prairie dog burrows. Complexity and size of burrows matter as one individual typically requires around 40 to 60 hectares of long contiguous burrow space. It was also found that recruitment success relies heavily on the availability of prairie dogs in the area for food and burrow space. Approximately 12 prairie dogs per hectare are needed to support recruitment. In order for a habitat to successfully support a self-sustaining population of black-footed ferrets, it must have six characteristics. First, there must be complexity within the prairie dog colony. This complexity means higher resource availabil availability for the black-footed ferret. Second, there must be a relatively high density of prairie dogs, the main food item of black-footed ferrets. Third, the potential for disease should be as low as possible. The sylvatic plague and canine distemper are great threats to the black-footed ferret. Fourth, predation pressure should be relatively low. Fifth, ideally resource availability should be high and resource conflicts should be low. And sixth, Landowners and nearby human inhabitants should have positive or neutral attitudes towards the black-footed ferret, preventing them from being hunted as pests. Black-footed ferrets are highly carnivorous predators. As their main food source, prairie dogs make up a huge part of their diet, up to 75% of the diet for juveniles and adult males and 66% of the diet for adult females. It is likely that these percentages are higher in areas of higher prairie dog population density. The remaining part of the black-footed ferret's diet is made up of other small mammals and a few miscellaneous food items. Small mammals that could be included in the diet include mice, gophers, and ground squirrels. A few other diet items may include small birds, eggs, and small reptiles. Here are a few facts about the black-footed ferret. Black-footed ferrets generally live between one and three years in the wild, although their average lifespan in captivity is around four years. Black-footed ferrets are the only native ferret species in North America. On average, one black-footed ferret will eat about 100 prairie dogs in a year. Black-footed ferrets are nocturnal, meaning they spend most of the day sleeping and are most active at night. And lastly, black-footed ferrets have been considered rare ever since their discovery, but historically have been thought to have gone completely extinct twice. The first means of imperilment for the black-footed ferret is the decline in prairie dog populations. The dependency that black-footed ferrets have on prairie dog populations is likely the largest reason for their population decline. Historically, prairie dog populations have been unstable in North America. Along with their shared struggle of habitat loss, prairie dogs have been long viewed as pests. Because of this, prairie dog populations have declined as a result of human actions. Trapping and culling of these animals has not been uncommon, and intentional and unintentional poisoning of these animals has also had a large effect. However, none of these threats compare to the effect the sylvatic plague has had on prairie dog and black-footed ferret populations. With that being said, the second means of imperilment for the black-footed ferret is the sylvatic plague. The sylvatic plague, scientifically known as Yersinia pestis, is a bacterial disease in which many mammals, including small rodents, prairie dogs, ferrets, and humans, may be highly susceptible. The plague is a vector spread, with fleas being the main source of transmission. Symptoms of the plague may be fever, chills, weakness, and swollen and painful lymph nodes. The plague has three separate forms, bubonic, which is infection of the lymph, lymph nodes, septicemic, which is infection of the blood, and pneumonic, which is infection of the lungs. Symptoms may start between two and six days after infection and can be highly lethal depending on the type of the plague and the organism that is affected. The sylvatic plague is a huge threat to prairie dog and black-footed ferret populations. A breakout of the sylvatic plague in a single prairie dog colony can wipe out over 90% of the population in a short amount of time. With the plague being highly lethal to black-footed ferrets as well, 
the high mortality rate of the number one food source, that sylvatic plague, can be devastating to remaining populations of black-footed ferrets. The third means of imperilment for the black-footed ferret is habitat loss. With human expansion generally comes habitat destruction. Increases in land transformation for construction of houses and buildings, along with development of agriculture, has led to a huge decline in suitable habitat for prairie dogs and black-footed ferrets. The IUCN Red List last assessed the black-footed ferret population in 2015. At this time, it was found that only around 200 mature adults remained in the wild within the four currently known self-sustaining populations. Population levels historically have fluctuated a lot, with almost 500 breeding adults in 2008 and a somewhat rapid decline with around 40% of the population being lost between 2008 and 2015. In 1985, 18 individuals were taken into captivity from the Matitsi colony in an attempt to save the species. However, because these individuals were from the same colony, genetic variability is very limited. Of the 18 individuals captured, only seven were considered to be genetically unique. Today, all known populations of black-footed ferrets are descendants of, the few, of these few individuals. Of course, these odds do not seem to be in the black-footed ferrets' favor, but there is hope. Back in 1985, when those 18 individuals were taken into captivity from the Matitsi colony, the black-footed ferret captive breeding program began. As of 2008, six institutions have participated in the captive breeding program, five of them being zoos and one being a federal facility. Although there is limited genetic diversity in the individuals that were originally brought in to start the program, the seven distinct genetic variants have produced a lineage of over 8,000 individuals in captivity. Of course, increasing the numbers of the black-footed ferret population is important for their conservation, the goal of the captive breeding program was always to reintroduce these individuals back into the wild. After successful propagation of the black-footed ferret within the captive breeding programs, individuals began to be released into the wild in 1991. Over time, most individuals were released within their historical range in states including Montana, South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Kansas, and New Mexico. Two populations have also been reintroduced into colonies in southern Canada and northern Mexico. As of the most recent assessment by the IUCN Red List, a majority of these populations still continue to be dependent on human intervention, with only four populations being considered self-sufficient. Su su Black-footed ferrets were also released back into the Matitsi colony habitat and continue to be mostly self-sufficient. Typically, a couple hundred black-footed ferrets are released into the wild each year. As the sylvatic plague continues to be a threat to black-footed ferret and prairie dog populations, ways to protect these animals from this disease continue to be one of the most important considerations for their conservation. Although a vaccine has been created to help protect black-footed ferrets within the captive breeding program from the fatal disease, no such treatment had yet been developed for the prairie dogs before 2016. Even though the prairie dog populations are less threatened than the black-footed ferret, their survival is essential to the survival of the black-footed ferret because of their need for the resources prairie dogs provide to them. Peanut butter flavored baits were created with the vaccine inside in hopes to distribute them to prairie dog colonies. In 2016, a team formed from the World Wildlife Fund, Fish and Wildlife Services, and Model Avionics to create a delivery system to efficiently distribute the bait. A drone was created that is able to drop these baits in prairie dog territory, successfully distributing the vaccine in the wild. In 2019, a patent was awarded and the team continues to improve their delivery system in hopes to lessen the effects of the sylvatic plague in the wild. As one of North America's rarest mammals, conserving the remaining population of black-footed ferrets is extremely important if we want the species to recover. 
Black-footed ferrets play a huge role in population control of North America's prairie dogs. Without this regulation, prairie dog populations would likely increase rapidly and throw off the balance of their ecosystem. Conservation efforts need to be followed now if we want this species to survive. So together, let's save our BFFs, the black-footed ferrets.